What up everyone, Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind, and I am back to the OG set. Things are getting back to normal here at Rewind. Uh, it's been pretty hectic, and what's funny is, while we're hectic, it's not a much going on out there, but there's still some fun talking points. So let's talk about some of this. Uh, Panasonic S1R is ranked uh, best full frame by DxO Mark. So this is a re review site where they put it through some heavy uh, paces. And you can see right here that it ranked number three underneath the Pentax 645Z and the Hasselblad X1D 50C, both medium format cameras as opposed to a full frame. And underneath we got the D850, the A7R 3 and the Z7, uh, knocking everything down a peg underneath those medium formats. So they're really talking about the sensors here, not the overall camera, but it does say a lot for a full frame to hold its weight against medium format systems. But those medium format systems have also been out for quite a while and the S1R is brand new within a killer processor. It was a great release by Panasonic. It took a huge gamble by going into full frame and I guess it's paying off. Uh, it is a phenomenal camera, but it might not be for everyone. Um, what I'm saying here is that these reviews are mainly talking about the sensor, talking about dynamic range, color depth, uh, noise in low light, things like that, not the overall camera. So while it may perform well in these situations, it might be too big ergonomically for you, or the menu settings might be a little weird, or the workflow inside that camera might not work for you. So when you look at these reviews, it's, it's really easy to just look at numbers and grab things, but sometimes it's not just all about the numbers, but it's about what is right in your hands. So it is a great camera. I urge you to check it out, uh, rent it, or, or go to some events where they're letting you guys try it out. Uh, Panasonic did a, a huge favor by us, letting us have a crack at the S series. We took it to Patagonia before its release, and we did a video on many of its features separately. So you guys can go to Adorama TV and just check out the Panasonic S series videos. Uh, ben Grenier uh, was our, uh, our ambassador there, I guess you would say. And he did some phenomenal imagery, uh, specifically landscapes, and showing the high-res capability of the S series. So check that out if you get a chance. Um, while we're in cameras, I might as well mention this, that the Nikon uh, D850-5600 and the D7500 firmware update adds direct Wi-Fi. So here's what this is about. Normally, uh, you would have Wi-Fi in these cameras anyway, but they would only work with SnapBridge, and they would have to connect only to SnapBridge through SnapBridge. What this is allowing your camera to do is connect independently of the app. So you can use third-party apps to do time lapses or whatever. If there's some other app in there that you wanna use your camera with, it can connect to other software, huge. Huge, uh, and apparently this update will also improve the autofocus in the D850, uh, which is kind of crazy. So in more gear news, uh, Canon has released the 85 millimeter 1.2L for the RF mount, which is the R series, their mirrorless full frame. It is a beast piece of glass, but the 85 millimeter has been a legacy lens in their lineup forever. I mean, uh, you've, you've seen so many photographers, portrait photographers using the 85 millimeters uh, that have come out from Canon forever. And now there's an updated version for the RF mount for their mirrorless. Uh, no stabilization, and it is a big front element. We're talking about an 82 millimeter filter on that front end. Uh, I held it for a little bit. I looked through it a little bit. The images look really clean. Uh, it's 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 going to be one of those uh it's continuous continuing the legacy of the 85 millimeter whether you're in the r series is another story so let's uh talk about that in the comments if you guys have jumped if you're in a canon and you're jumping into the mirrorless uh are you interested in the new lens coming up they're doing some really high quality glass for that r series uh I got to give props and shout out to my boy, Daniel Norton. He got featured on F stoppers with one of his videos from our channel, three point lighting on episode 210 of onset, which is crazy. So this is like a really simplistic idea, right? It is three point lighting where this is one of the first lighting steps you probably learn when you're getting into studio lighting and he walks you through it. But not only that, the one thing you got to give Dan is he will actually show you step by step and then shoot it live. He's not, building it and then shooting it and showing you finished edited photos. And then while he's doing it, he'll be like, oh, you know what I could do? I could do a variation and he will. He'll, I mean, you're looking at the images come up live. He's shown you details and specs of what's going on. And I, um, big shout out to F stoppers for featuring Dan on this one. Uh, it, you, it's one of those videos that I feel like you could gloss over really easily because it's three point lighting and not something flashy or crazy or a new product. And it's a male model, which is usually overlooked, believe it or not in videos, uh, it, it's kind of crazy. If it's not a beautiful woman, people tend not to click on it so much. 
But this was a great video, especially if you're just starting out with studio and you want a really clear, clean explanation of what three-point lighting is, how you can build it yourself, and quick variations, and see it happen live. Not edited, not here's polished photos after, but the actual light sitting right there. So check that out. Uh, but on the topic of editing, uh, Nat Geo kind of had a little slip up here. So this Milky Way photo was shot by Beth Moon. And you can see these red circles here are clear clone looking tools. Uh, I don't know what you would call it, but she's claiming it's not clone tools. So let's take a look at this really quickly. Uh, so when you scroll down, you can see that everybody just bashing it when Nat Geo put it out there. And there's people actually showing you where she uh, quote unquote may have cloned from to make it a clean uh, panoramic of a long, long exposure to get those stars and the silhouetted trees and all that kind of stuff. But what, what she's claiming is that uh, first of all, she's a longtime photographer from the film era, and she shot this and wanted to stitch it together, gave it to an assistant, and an assistant uh, auto-stitched it, and apparently because of the wide angle of her lens, it stitched over pieces that looked like it was cloned. I don't know if there's truth in that or not, um, and just to be clear, as the photographer can do whatever she wants. This is her work. She can put it out there, and how it's received is another story, but Nat Geo putting it out there not seeing this is kind of an issue, especially when Nat Geo was like this echelon of photographers and, and another legacy, I keep saying that word today, uh, of, of the game, right? So for them to put this out and not see it is a little discerning to me. I'm hoping that we're not losing quality control out there, but uh, still a beautiful image, you know, whether it's edited or not is another story, I don't know. Uh, let's talk about something a little more lighthearted. So Shimoda releases this shoulder strap line, especially designed for female adventure photographers. So basically it's really meant for the female form and you know, it's ergonomic. It can actually uh, work for a woman's frame. I'm trying to be very delicate on how I'm framing this, but on how I'm saying this. But you can see right there that they really took uh, notice and they really took uh, to heart that there's so many female photographers out there that aren't being catered to, and now you have a harness system that's tailored for the shape of your body. Uh, this is great. Some other companies have done this. 16 by 9 did it for female DPs and stuff like that uh, with the, the camera systems for cinema cameras. And uh, I saw it coming down the line. I was like, this is pretty cool. You know, you don't have to change a whole bag. You just have to change the straps. And uh, it, just putting it out there lets women know they're, they're welcome to come shoot. I mean, it's definitely been seen as a male-dominated industry. So I hope things like this are kind of signals going, hey, you know, you don't have to happen to put something on that might not totally work for you. No, they, they will hear you, just let them know and they'll create things for your market, you know? So that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy about that. I hope uh, that there's female photographers out there that um, support this because the more that that stuff supported, the more all brand manufacturers start putting stuff out like that, you know? In this industry, you have to feed it or you don't get it kind of a thing. Uh, some more cool news, uh, Yodika Films have released all these funny little films, Ciro, Vega, Atlas, Pegasus, and they're pretty much just more pre-exposed films. They're all 400 ISO, but you can see here that Atlas uh, produces colors randomly in each frame. Pegasus is rainbow, Polaris is mint blue with reddish vignette. It's, it's basically controlled pre-exposed films, so it's almost like analog presets, I guess you could say, right? Uh, but it's the same mindset as anything else. So when you shot like Fuji Velvia, you knew you were getting punchy, uh, uh, vibrant colors. So the same thing here, you would load this film knowing what you were getting and what you were trying to shoot with. Or maybe you get a happy accent, or maybe it would just be completely distracting from the images you were trying to do, right? It can go either way. Uh, let me know if you're someone that's into this pre-exposed film, because this is about the third company I'm seeing come out with this type of film. And I'm wondering if they feel they need a gimmick and they can't just put out clean, really nice film anymore, uh, that they need something that'll hook people in to want to shoot film or need some special effect out of it. Uh, I'm curious, if you're an analog shooter or you're someone that's new, that learned in digital, that is going into film, let me know down below if you're someone that feels, I, I really like this weird specialty film, especially like the red scale stuff or the purple stuff from Lom Lomography, Lomo, whatever. Uh, is that stuff that's, is that attractive to you? Or, or can we get these independent companies to make really high-end film? Like we used to have this really clean stuff uh, and, and we used to have abundance of it, but you, every day I feel like I, I hear about uh, lines of film that are just going down and then these keep coming out of nowhere. So I'm curious about that. It's really interesting where uh, things are going. 
In the complete opposite end of things though, Samsung unveils the world's first 64 megapixel smartphone sensor. That's right, so they're cramming 64 megapixels onto a little tiny sensor in your phone. We're talking about a pixel size of eight micrometers, which is crazy. So far, the sensor was 20 megapixels at that size. And I think for new people, they hear megapixel and go, <gasps> And it's just like a car with a lot of horsepower, but no torque, right? So it sounds like it's fast, but it might not actually be. Uh, megapixel might sound like it's awesome, but it might not actually be. For me, more megapixel usually means more noise and lower light. And when I'm using my phone, most times it's because I'm not gonna light and I'm just grabbing something really fast and it's gonna go to somewhere that's low res anyway, like a text message or Facebook or something you know, social and I don't need the resolution at that point, but I do need lower noise because I'm probably somewhere that has horrible lighting because I'm not creating it myself. Uh, I don't know if this is useful. I do think that if we can, it, of course we have to progress with the technology, but I'm wondering if the resolution is just a push to kind of make it even more of this is the new point and shoot, and it basically is, but I don't think anyone's going, man, I wish I had 50, 64 megapixels in my phone. I'm pretty sure uh, that's not a thing. Plus, you gotta remember, uh, the more power behind that sensor, the more battery it's gonna eat up, the more processing power you need inside the phone to, to actually handle all that information, which eats up more battery. So if you're out there and you actually use your phone for phone means and it starts dying on you, or you're gonna be that person at a Starbucks plugging in your phone because you had so much resolution that you couldn't deal with it, I'm sure you can dial it back and, and lower the resolution, but then what's the point? I, I'm just like, I don't understand why we're cramming megapixels so hard into phones. It just makes no sense to me and it kind of seems counterproductive, but let me know if you're someone that's been waiting for a super high-res phone. I'm kind of curious about that. I know people are using phones for other things like live streaming and stuff like that, but even still, uh, you just don't need that much resolution. You need actual speed of processing at that point, which is usually why cameras with lower res are geared more for video. Like, you know, the, S, um, the A7S and the Sonys are more about sensitivity and keeping the resolution low so they're cleaner and lower light. It's, it's, I don't know, it's such a weird topic to me. I don't know, hit me down below. Uh, and I think that's where I'm gonna leave you on the news, but I just wanted to clue you in on some stuff that's happening on home base over here. So, my travel diary Bhutan premiered uh, this week. So, the guy behind TTL, Sal Dahlia, man, he's been killing it. What a beautiful series this is. I, I mean, I'm only 10 seconds deep and look at how gorgeous this, this is. So, I urge you to check it out. Uh, I'm not going to show you everything, but Ms. Hatton went on a trip with us, or Sal rather, and checked out Bhutan, which is an incredible place. And we got a lot of comments about people who visit there constantly. And it's a lot about the culture and how she went about shooting and stuff like that. But uh, it's, I, I, like, I really like this travel diary series. We did this um, before with Kenya, and now we're going into Bhutan. And, uh, you know, if you guys are into this kind of stuff, Hit like, hit, hit, hit some comments down there below, share it around because the more you guys feed into it, the more you guys can get more of this content. It's just like anything else. You know, the people, are, uh, the marketplaces are tailoring to you. So if you wanna see more travel stuff and you wanna see some higher production level things on your uh, media like YouTube, you gotta just do the easy things like hit like and, and comment or just watch it, you know? Uh, and finally, my pet project that's been going on. Uh, we did week two here of the Twitch channel. If you're on Twitch, we've been playing some games. We passed the thousand follower mark over here. So I actually did give away this MSI GE73 laptop. Um, however, they did not claim it yet. So maybe I might put it back up for grabs. I don't know, but this week, uh, Cody Hayes from MSI will be doing takeovers during the week. I'll be giving away this headset right here on the, on the left you can see over here. And you can always go to the clips if you missed the live streams and see all like the highlights of what happened during the, the gameplay. I even called my mom during Mother's Day, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's whoop, I, just hit, I just hit play on one of them. Oh my gosh, let's go back. But this is pretty much everything you need to see uh, if you missed it. But here's me calling my mom on Mother's Day just to hear her sound like Linda Belcher from Bob's Burgers, which was hilarious. <laughs> but you can join us every Sunday. We're doing 12 to 3. We're changing it up. So it's going to be 12 to 3 Eastern Standard Time. Get on twitch.tv slash XP. And if you're a gamer, come play with us. Uh, we've, been calling, we've been pulling people out of the chat. And we played uh, X... Uh, 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 sorry. Mm, I've been going too hard here. We've been pulling people out of the chat. 
and playing a uh, Apex Legends with them. They've been coming on live with us. So that was pretty awesome. Gave out some gift codes. And I just, you know, I really want to make this a community and I want you guys to just have a lot of fun with it. And I'm having a blast. I mean, I get to play every game I want to play these days and, uh, you know, go live with it. So it's pretty awesome for me. All right, and I want to thank MSI and Alienware for hooking us up with the gear for that live stream. And Sling Studio, you guys are awesome. Okay, I'm going to get out of here. But before I go, I wanted to pull up uh, comments from last week. So we just talked about a 64 megapixel phone sensor. And last week we talked about an AK 8K video on a, on a smartphone. And Body Snatcher commented, 48 megapixel camera, but only 64 gigabytes of storage deal breaker. And uh, Duncan actually said, I do enjoy Destiny and I'm playing on PS4. First of all, I hate Destiny. I'm just putting that out there. Just saying, sorry, not into it. Uh, but yeah, you know, you need the storage, you need the processing. I think we're, they're going to pump in a lot of features into smartphones that, you're gonna sound, that are going to sound nice, but might be crippling to you lifestyle-wise. So just be aware of that. Uh, you know, it's not always about numbers. It's about what actually works in the real situations, okay? Um, so megapixels are great. Horsepower is great, but if it's not what you need, it's not for you, right? So be aware of that and look at both sides. There's always a con to everything, uh, plus a pro and con. I shouldn't say everything's a con. There's, pro, <laughs> there's always pros and cons to everything. And in photo, especially in gear, there's always a trade-off. You gain this, you're gonna sacrifice that. It's always gonna be that way. It's just, and I always relate it to cars, right? You have more horsepower, you're probably gonna eat more gas or something like that. So uh, just make your decisions intelligently and just know that there's tons of information out there for you to research what works for you and what doesn't you know so hit up adorama tv if you're looking at some gear things we've definitely had new product announcements on everything check out alc blog adorama.com slash alc adorama learning center plenty of stuff on there and of course you can check out our facebook uh, page we always have things popping up there's always live events including this tuesday Tomorrow, I'm doing a demo live on Facebook. I'm shooting for the first time live in like a few months. I haven't done that. I know, I used to do them like every two weeks. Now I'm kind of like slowing down. There's just so much going on. Uh, I am doing, um, I am doing portraits with speed lights, apparently. Jeez, I'm sorry about that. That was rude. I apologize. You deserve better than this. I apologize. All right, guys, I will see you guys next time. Uh, I will see, hopefully, I'll see you guys on Facebook uh, to tomorrow night when I go do portraits with speed lights. If you're watching this after the fact, just head to Adorama, uh, facebook.com slash Adorama, and you can see the video there after I've done it live. So uh, there's that. And don't forget IGTV and every platform ever. Just hit Adorama on every platform. There's something, I promise you. All right, I'm going to go grab coffee. I'm going to go finish the rest of this day. And uh, I don't know, I guess break this down and set up another set for something else. Okay, later, guys. Peace. <laughs>